All right, stocks are rebounding from the Trump sell-off, but are we out of the woods? Here now from London is Jasper Lawler, Senior Market Analyst at London Capital Group. So Jasper, the sell-off was a nice breather. We're still higher for the year. Trump leaves for his first international trip as president on Friday, but you know more media leaks may be coming. So as an investor, how do you price in these risks? Good morning, Scott. Well, yes, I mean, I think we're in a battle at the moment between the, the dip buyers that have been dominating uh, U.S. stock markets particularly, but global markets too, um, over the, the course of this year, and a genuine concern that uh, Donald Trump's agenda uh, looks like a, has a limited chance of, of success because of all the turmoil and the genuine risk of, of impeachment. So it's, uh, it's a battle playing out at the moment. I think that goes some way to explain why we've kind of leveled out a bit in European trading. Um, and perhaps... Trump's international trip that you mentioned this weekend actually can be a welcome distraction from this. And, uh, you know, we can take, take heart from uh, Steve Nugent's comments that actually, you know, that the agenda of uh, cutting taxes, deregulation is still tricking along in the background. Mm -hmm. All right. So with the pullback, though, I mean, where are the opportunities? Where should you be putting your money? Because the day before the sell off, you know, we hit fresh record highs. Well, precisely. And I, I think one of the, the reasons the market needed this was because the, the breadth of the market was getting so small. It really was just the, essentially the FANG stocks, the, the big top technology companies that had really been pushing ahead while the rest of the market was looking a bit lackluster. Um, I think this pullback was necessary. And hopefully what it can bring with it is actually those tech stocks coming into line, maybe the financial shares um, dropping a bit further into value um, and bringing the market a bit more in sync hopefully increasing overall breadth so actually you can participate in the market as a whole uh, rather than just what was becoming a very narrow set of, of winning stocks. Okay, and when you say FANG stocks, we're talking Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Alphabet. Uh, do, do you think the Fed goes in June? I mean, the meeting is about a month away, but a lot could happen in that time. I mean, look at a month ago, we were still all excited about tax reform and deregulation. And now all this turmoil happened. Well, it's, it's certainly possible that they don't, but one thing that would suggest to me that they probably will do is because uh, all along they've, they've, not been, uh, they, they've been saying that they've not been factoring in any fiscal stimulus from Donald Trump. Obviously markets were, and we've seen a bit of a Trump fade going on from the reduced possibility of that, but the Fed never really was. And they specifically referenced in the last communique that um, Q1 was noticeably slower, right. uh, but that in itself is not enough to derail them. So it seems like they're actually for the first time almost on a set path of rate hikes now, rather than being so data dependent. And I would expect them to go in June. Uh, again, after that is a lot more uncertain, but I would expect probably two hikes. And then it looks like they really do want to refocus yeah. attention to the, uh, to the balance sheet. To the balance sheet. All right, Jasper Lawler, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us from London. My pleasure. Thanks, Scott. All right, I'm Scott Cam, and you're watching The Street.